Well, good morning everybody. We made it through the night. We had we had a very good night sleep to be honest. It was very comfortable in the end and we stayed dry. We're living like an animal <laughs> once again here. It's um just a strewn mess under there. I put my shirt uh, under the air mat so that it wouldn't get, well it couldn't realistically get any wetter, but that it couldn't get any wetter. And I've hung my trousers up over there, just sort of out the way as much as uh, anything else gives them a chance to dry. I've checked the, I've checked the forecast and it looks like we shouldn't get any any more rain over the next few days or if we do you know a very small amount so hopefully fingers crossed the weather that we had sort of coming in last night was the exception for this trip when you got all these bumpy bits here for me navigating around these things is really quite tricky because whilst they do appear on the map they tend to appear on the map as teeny weeny little very small bumps it's not like big valleys and things like that that you can get through so I must admit I do find navigating this more difficult as you kind of going around this way and around that way trying to work your way around these things I left the car yeah yesterday about half past six and it was really only about a four kilometer walk or less three and a half kilometers to the town that i was aiming for and i got there about nine o'clock mind you the going was quite rough as well there was some very very wet it was almost crossing not quite knee deep water but it was it, it was challenging <laughs> let's say anyway eventually we got to the town but there was nowhere to pitch or camp there, not that I could see. And of course, by that time, it was about 8, 8.15 and it uh, gets dark at, well, nine and then half an hour of twilight. So I filled up water bottles by the town and thought, right, well, we're just going to have to just wander around. <laughs> so I don't really know where we are because I was kind of just wonder, wandering, just, uh, I think the town is, I think it's over that way, to be honest, because we were kind of coming in a reasonably straight line, but we were certainly doing a lot of meandering around to try and find, um, you know, where the heck we were going. Eventually, I kind of saw these trees here, and I thought, I'd already walked kind of down over that way a bit. You can see it's very grassy and, you know, it's reminiscent of, of Dartmoor, but on steroids, really. So I found these trees and I thought well, maybe there might be like a flat area in amongst the trees, but no. And then I just came here and I saw this, this sliver of flat area here. And it quite literally is, you know, an absolute, <laughs> just through there. So I thought, perfect, we'll, we'll pitch up, we'll pitch up there. I don't know what else you would have squeezed in that space. I mean, you know, the trail star, you would have fitted over all this stuff, but it's certainly, you know, I think your mids, you would struggle to pitch your mids in here, I think, to be fair. You know, in your tents, you might just get away with it. We've squashed a lot of the area down, so you might just get away with it. But I must admit, I'm kind of glad I brought this. I'm kind of glad I brought this setup with me, to be honest, because it gave a lot of flexibility, you know, with, with what to do. So basically what we've got here is inside oh, here we've got the because we've got this grass and heather garden right next to the bed so we get a nice 
you know, smells from that. Although they don't kind of just smell it, I don't think. But anyway, we've got this grass stuff right next to the bed. And <laughs> very conveniently, there's a little flat area, literally just in there where where I can put my cook, you know, my cooking pot there. And then obviously I've got my food stuff over there. We've got, uh, and then we just got clothes and food, more food stuff over here. So we've kind of, you know, winged it somewhat here. And of course, one advantage of a pitch like this, you've got all the headroom in the world. I've set up this here. I might try and do some cooking in, in that space there. Then I can sit there, put my feet there and maybe do some cooking, you know, just there. I think my shirt's going to dry out, you know, in a minute. Anyway, I think I better get on and and do something. <laughs> I think this <laughs> the beauty of my style of camping is when I just chill out in one place, my idea of doing something is doing <laughs> doing nothing and just recording whatever I can think. There's a one sheep just up on the on that hill over there. Oh, there's another one just over there somewhere. I'm not exactly sure, but I think so. Probably wondering who the devil this interloper is down here. I've got absolutely no idea how I'm going to get back to the car because I go back on Friday, so the day after tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going <laughs> to how I'm going to get back. I think I'm going to have to go up that because I mean, look, got all these, you know, rocks over there. And unless I, I think I've got to go in that general direction over there. So either I've got to go up there and around that one or maybe up between that one. Oh, I don't know. God alone knows. We'll figure it out. I better give it's probably going to be easier going back because basically going back, you've just got to head for the head for the path and try and get around. Because there, 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 there is a path that goes sort of along the top over there. Um, but trying to get to that town, that was, uh, that, was, <laughs> that was fun to say the least. I wouldn't have been, I will admit, I wouldn't, uh, I think I would have struggled if I'd have just had map and, map and compass. Uh, with me maybe maybe if I'd have done it that way rather than looking at my phone like five minutes and then not looking at it for 10 minutes and then just walking blindly probably would have found it better maybe if I'd have concentrated uh, more but I thought I was going in the right direction anyway we got here <laughs> we got here eventually I think I've just discovered the ultimate lazy bastard camp well Obviously, when you're camping and you've got your cooking pot right next to you, which is where it normally would be there. Now, that's obviously your ultimate lazy bastard camping, but everybody does that. Then they get up and either piss off back to the car and home again, or they carry on walking somewhere. Now, I've now discovered an, um, an alternative to that, and I've never done this before so well it's kind of a bit of a work in progress but now what we've got to do is i've just put the stuff there so i can kind of reach it and stuff there so i can reach it but i've rigged up this this cooking area down there which means everything is reachable and basically to get to it i don't even have to stand up i can just move my backside you know <laughs> i can just go like a like a funny little flat fat slug thing and just sort of crawl down here and then give me bum on oop, oop. oh it's not the most easiest to come out there eh? that's the ultimate fat bastard eating thing you don't even have to stand up to get to your cafe or your restaurant you just come very lazily to the edge of your bed <laughs> and then you just sit <laughs> and then you just sit here and then you can cook your food kind of I'm thinking of using this area here and all my stuff over there I can sort of 
lean over, <laughs> bring down to this area here. So we've, we're very useful on this channel, like, like I said. So if you, if you rig up some sort of, and not only that, this bit of Cuban, I virtually, I'd say 90% of the time I never use it. It just stays in my pack, you know, not doing anything. But just like one in 10 camps, it has, it has a useful use, either for putting on the ground, because I haven't got a big enough ground sheet, because obviously I'm using bivvies and things, and then I can put my stuff on it to keep off the ground. Uh, and then other times I put it next to me, so I've got something dry to put my feet on. And then obviously in this instance, it's the acting is that exactly. So I've got it pegged out there and there, and it's exactly a foot mat for me to sit on there. So that certainly a very, <laughs> it's very useful. I mean, it's so light. It takes up absolutely no space whatsoever. And it's so light, you don't even know you're carrying it. But it's just one of those things that just once now and again, you know, works out to be, you know, quite useful, let's say camp is literally just around the corner around there and then we've got these mountainy ruggedy things hairy <laughs> and of course we've got a splashingy top down there as usual And be sure to subscribe and return for my, my chicken dinner. This uh, DJI mic system is... Uh... Go on then, have a bit more of a splash. Go on then. Go on then. Go on then. Go on then. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not waiting there forever for you to splash. It's so remote out here. It's uh, it's crazy, really. I thought there was um, a tan down here last night. It looked so wet. It looked like there was a small tan here, but I think in the mist I just saw a bit of water not an actual tan we're just having a little stretch around camp that's the trees by camp e it's pretty ugh, wet around here Ah, there's the town there. So, whoop. Yeah, I don't think we can uh, miss that before these rocky outcrops around here. It wouldn't be difficult to uh, get misplaced. Yeah, it's a bit breezier up here. So that's where I'll get water from, you know, a little bit later. I'm not sure if you can camp, you know, closer to it. It's really quite rugged around here. up 
on the highest point. So that's the trees just down there. So should be an easy walk from camp by those trees just straight down there. So yeah, now I can see we won't get. It's so different when it's misty. I came in sort of down that valley down into there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna get out of here to be honest. Might be worth trying to go up that way and, and back. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I'm gonna go back the way I came in. Alright, well we're this side of the town. I just came over here really just for a quick look and see if there was anywhere else to pitch over this side and I have to say that this tarn is not exactly the uh, <laughs> the pitching mecca of the world that is for sure well we're in camp it's coming up to seven o'clock soon I have to say I don't know where I don't know where the day has gone. It's absolutely flown by. It's been, mind you, I didn't wake up until, I didn't, literally, I think I woke up at 11 o'clock. Because of course I didn't get here until later yesterday. I was kind of putting stuff away and sorting myself out at like nine or 10 o'clock a night last night. So by the time I fell asleep, it was like midnight. And then I just slept almost the whole way through until, like I said, 11 o'clock. I think I woke up once or twice, but mostly I was just fast asleep or asleep anyway. Although having said that, the Garmin watch still said that I didn't have a very good night. I'll tell you one thing, it's a sure of a hell of a lot better night than when I'm at home. At least I got some sleep. So that was a... Uh, that's a good thing um, and plenty of it. But I think yesterday's walk in kind of knackered me and I had quite a bit of cramp last night. I don't normally, I don't normally get cramp, but I had two or three <laughs> tweaks in the old thighs yesterday, which was a bit painful. So we got that sorted out by giving my leg a good good old rub and then eventually having some some tea and soup and i think the liquid from that helped tremendously it has to be said and then today as i say we've got up at 11. i did my cooking video so make sure you check out my chicken boiled potatoes and peppers and onion and spring onion um, video or videos or however that's going to come out I don't know. Then I went for a little walk up there over to the town got some water flew the um, DJI Mini Pro 3 so we had a fly with that I try and do another flight tomorrow it's been a long time since I've used a drone. You can't, for unfortunately, you're not allowed to use them on Dartmoor, although how well that is policed, I don't know. I'm not quite sure whether they go around prosecuting and, uh, and telling everybody off who actually uses a, a drone on Dartmoor. <laughs> Comments below. Um, but I had a little fly, um, you know, over there and I'll do another flight tomorrow. It might be worth doing, doing, I think tomorrow after my next flight, it might be worth doing a basic video on the drone. People, campers might be interested in it. And I'll try and do a video on the G DJI microphone system. Uh, probably picked up a few tips on that since my last video but that seems to be going well I've got it you know secured on my coat here so I must admit that does seem quite nice 
So I'm just watching the Terminal Man on Amazon Prime on my phone. I'm obviously still outside. You can see the poncho behind set up in tap mode. I've got it pitched one pet one put one pole here. I put another pole over there so I've got plenty of height over that side because I kind of feel that even if the wind comes this way all that you know all that heather there and the trees over there will give some protection. I've pitched this side quite low and then obviously the back quite low and that gave quite a lot of protection last night. I did notice that I was getting a little bit damp on the top of the bivvy but the bivvy you know the bivvy did very well as well so you know I was certainly pleased you know with that and I, I slept very very well. The only thing is the ground is quite uneven it comes down into a bit of a dip here so I think I'll get my raincoat and my trousers which I've mostly dried off and just put those things under there. I'm not too worried about where my legs are because really anything below hip doesn't really matter if your legs dangle a bit or what, what it doesn't really matter what your legs are doing you really just want your your ass and your and your hips and obviously the upper part of your body to be you know relatively secure so and I think that dip is kind of where my hips would be so I'm going to put my raincoat and trousers under there I think I made that tea a bit strong I like weak tea but it's certainly a very interesting, you know, landscape here. I mean, this grass, look at it. Look at the grass. They need some more sheep here, I think. I don't know what's happened to the sheep, but if you had more sheep here, you'd probably find you'd have more, more places to pitch. Comments below. However, do you find somewhere to pitch? when you've got grass like this. I mean, we were just so lucky. It was like literally nine o'clock last night. And I just found this, this one <laughs> flat area here where I could put the, put the bivvy down on. It's uh, <laughs> tight, tight to say the least in here. But it did well, I must admit, it is a superb, a superb bivvy. <laughs> I felt a little dampness on the, on the top of the sleeping bag. But it wasn't much, it was very, very small. And there was no dampness on the, on the underside of the bivvy. And the quilt itself was just, you know, you could like feel, feel more, you know, you could feel condensation there. And that was it. Yeah, it's nice here. I might come here again in the hope that I can find, <laughs> in the hope that this spot still stays flat. Um, there might be one place down by the lake or tan, but it's not it's not ideal it's not easy finding somewhere around here i think if it was it was getting it was almost getting to the point because it was misty and so unpleasant the weather last night it was almost getting to the point where i would have quite literally just had to have just lain down somewhere anywhere because heading back to the car wasn't an option. I wasn't about to be doing that. And I wasn't exactly going to be calling out mountain rescue just because I couldn't find somewhere to pitch. But I'll tell you, it was getting to the point where I was thinking, well, I just, just, I just have to find something. And even if it's 
incredibly uncomfortable for the night just to get me you know through the night you know literally until the morning because it was coming up to about nine o'clock when I got when I found this spot here <laughs> look at the mess <laughs> my look I've got I've got rubbish over there I still haven't put all my rubbish away don't worry about the wrappers there's no breeze so they're not blowing anywhere but my god I've got rubbish here I need to have a I need to have a tidy up. It's a pigsty, even by my standards. All right, well, I'll see you all. I'll see you all tomorrow.